Hallelujah. I'd like to start out with a verse in Psalms 34, 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Hallelujah. We taste and see that the Lord is good. And I pray everyone here, everyone watching, will taste of the glory and grace and mercy of God, and you will see. You will have a revelation of how good God is. Amen. Matthew eleven twenty-eight. 28. Jesus said, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden. The word laden, to walk in life with difficulty. Come to me and I will give you rest. Someone said to me the other day, you know, sometimes New Life preaches such a bless me, bless me, easy gospel. Well, come unto me all who labor and heavy laden, I will give you rest. We preach the other side of the promises. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. But I wanna build up hope here. I want you to know you can come unto me, all who are weary and burdened or heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn Learn from me. That's what we do here. That's what you do every week in every service or every time you open the Bible, you are learning from him. For I am gentle. Well, that's good. I am gentle and lowly in heart. And you will what? Find rest for your souls. Praise be unto God. As Pastor Stephen said, and Darren said, we look at you and we pray for you, knowing you are just as human as us, and you come into this place with worries and fears, and, and you don't know what to do sometime, but I pray as you've gathered God will have an encounter with you. You will have an encounter with him. Miracles take place from the moment you enter into this place. Jesus told his disciples, his shepherds, to feed my sheep, take care of my lambs, but not any feeding will do. There is a specific diet in the word of God, and it is one of faith and praise and prayer. It's a journey of faith. Darren, that was beautiful. Yes, when's the last time you spoke to that mountain? And I don't mean your husband or wife. <laughs> you, know, you know, you don't speak to them and say get cast into the sea. <laughs> that would be a no-no. But that debt, that worry, that fear, that addiction, we speak for you and pray for you, but there are times you're going to have to stand and say, addiction, I call you by name. You will not have authority in my life. We want healthy sheep here, and so therefore there is a healthy diet of the word of God, sound doctrine, establishing truths, his word, his will, his ways. Hallelujah. We have the Gospels where we learn, the book of Acts, the letters to the churches. And in everything, this book declares Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus, Yeshua, Emmanuel, God with us. No one has seen God at any time. Oh, but now we can say in Christ, Christ has revealed the Father.
everything written here and the central figure of every book is Christ. He is the Alpha and the Omega Christ. To know God is to know Yeshua, Jesus. The aim of this book is that you would know Christ, Jesus, and the power of his resurrection, that you would not feel alone, that you are empowered because you believe. The songs this morning were divine. They were orchestrated to fit this message. Cry out to him, call out to him, Jesus, and he will answer you. John 14, now look at this. John 14, 7. Jesus was speaking to Thomas and the disciples. And in verse 5, Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going and how can we know the way? In verse 6, Jesus said, said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Verse seven, if you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. Verse eight, Philip said to him, Lord, Show us the Father, then that will suffice. That will be sufficient for us. Show us the Father. And Jesus said to him in verse 9, Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me? (sighs) Have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. He who has seen me, Philip, has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Verse 10, do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. When you know Jesus, you know the Father. We know God, hallelujah. So in that incredible revelation, and of course, John chapter one states it as well, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Woo! We serve a living God. Oh, but I want to see God. You see, in Christ, he is the the glory of the Father, the express image of the Father, And I want you to be established and anchored in the revelation that Jesus is God. We have God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the triune God. Praise be unto the Lord. And as you have this revelation, we go into the book of Colossians. You know, emphasis matters. When people say the same thing over and over again, when the word of God repeats itself over and over again, we say, hallelujah, God's trying to teach me something, amen? Colossians is only four chapters, and the emphasis is the sufficiency and the supremacy of Christ. 
when you're anchored in that theology, in that doctrine, which is so important because if you're on YouTube or you see these shorts, it will say Jesus is a mere man. Jesus was, well, he was 100%. He's not really God. He is God. The angel decreed his name, and his name shall be called Emmanuel, God with us. From the beginning to the end, he is God. Created all things through him and by him, he is God. So the repetition in Colossians is amazing here. Just like in the book of John, you have the word belief or to believe in that gospel written over a hundred times. It's called the book of belief, the gospel of John. Hebrews only has 13 chapters and the word better is used 12 times trying to get the emphasis of a better covenant than the old. Can you imagine? That's in every chapter. A better covenant on better promises. A better priesthood. The old has faded away. Christ now. Better. I think when you read Hebrews, we better understand the word better. There's a point in the doctrine, so you're established. You're established and you're anchored. So you too can say, yes, the new covenant. It's a better covenant. Hebrews says the word over and over, better. Is believing important? The whole book of John is about believing in Jesus, the book of belief. Colossians is all about in him, unto him, for him, and by him. Jesus, all things, all wisdom and knowledge, atonement and salvation is in Christ. And guess what? I'm in Christ and you're in Christ. We have a sure foundation, amen? Now, if I have my way, and, and as you can see, all the other people are gone, so maybe we'll just read the whole book. You know, these letters, it says, read them to the church. I mean, we didn't even put in verses until, what, 700 years ago. It was a letter with no verses. It's kind of silly the way we read the Bible with all these verses. But the, the brains at the time, scholars, religious leaders, thought it would be easier for us. But it's easy to find a nice statement. But can you imagine doing that to a letter? Read it in its entirety, in its context. And the message comes alive. Well, furthermore, it is literature, but it is holy literature inspired by God, written for our maturity. What do you base your life on? I pray the wisdom found in the word, the admonishment, the doctrines of the word. Why do you think we praise? Because he inhabits the praises of his people. There's a whole book about praising called the book of Psalms. Psalms mean book, it means book of praise. It's, there's a book designated for praising. Why do we want you to grow in wisdom? There's a whole book called Proverbs. It's all about wisdom. Wisdom matters. Praise matters. The emphasis in the word matters, amen? So let's go through, I promise, not the whole thing. We'll start with chapter one. 
What time do we end here? Oh, I have 13 minutes. Okay, that's what that says. <laughs> hey, people. I love church and the gathering. But this is a serious moment. You have come into, not a carnival, <laughs> we are here talking about the words of life, the words of Christ, the words of sin, and how to be free. You know, if the person struggling with gambling or any sin, if you will read Romans 6, you'll understand that sin has no more dominion over you. And you will learn from Romans 6, how do I stop sinning is present yourself to God. Because it's very hard to sin and be praising. It's very hard to sin and present your body to God, the members, it says. So as you present yourself to God every day, all day, you're not sinning. Reckon your old man dead. And as we will see with identification, the doctrine of teaching, I am dead, I'm on the cross with Christ, in the tomb with Christ, and resurrected with Christ. Baptism has that same emphasis, death, burial, and resurrection. This is the renewing of your mind to the language and theology and doctrines of the Lord. Amen? You say, what is that? I'm, I'm dead, buried, and resurrected? Yes! In Christ. Because you are a new creation. Amen? Well, I don't feel like a new creation. It doesn't matter. If you've received Christ, you are. You are. Say, I am. Yes, a new creation. Hallelujah. And that foundation, that being established, established on these truths, no matter what storm comes, you will stand because you will not be an emotionally led believer, but a word-based, anchored in the word believer. Amen? So, we're going to go through chapter one, and I'll do a little bit of my commentary through it. We have 11 minutes. All is good. Now, in Colossians, a small town, 100 miles from Ephesus, it was a network church, outreach church of Ephesus. It was known for its famous black wool. It was a pretty wealthy town. So, Colossae was small. We don't really know much about it other than what I just told you. But we know Apostle Paul did not start this church. Someone from Ephesus did. Now, Apostle Paul is in prison, and his co-labor and minister, I think it was Epaphras, goes to Rome, goes and visits Paul and tells him how the church not the building, how the people are doing. Hallelujah. Why is the backstory important? Because that could be us. Our story might seem insignificant or our town or where we're from, but nothing is insignificant and the gospel goes where you are. So this is the beginning. Paul an apostle, verse one, of Jesus Christ by the will of God and Timothy, our brother. The scholars say Timothy helped write this book. To the saints and faithful brethren in Christ who are in Colossae, I want you to see right there what the believer is called. You are called saints. Because this is a Catholic nation, you can't probably, without great study, divorce yourself from the word saint other than something in Catholicism. But saint means here, it's all through the Bible that you are called a saint when you believe. 
You are separated unto Christ, called holy unto Christ. You are called a saint. And faithful brethren who are in this city, Colossae, grace to you and peace from God our Father and of the Lord Jesus Christ. All through the word, all through the gospel of John, we have the Father, we have the Son, the introduction and introducing of the, the work of the Holy Spirit in John, in John 13, 14, 15. The triune God is mentioned, and here the Father and Son are mentioned in the beginning of the book. Verse three, we give thanks to God and and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. You know, in the Bible, there are 650 prayers that Jesus prayed, 25 that Jesus prayed, 650 prayers throughout the Bible. Prayer matters. Amen? If things aren't working out, pray. Get on your knees and pray. Talk to God. Ask God. Seek God. If you don't know how to pray, Google the 650 prayers in the Bible and start speaking them out. You know, one time I Googled Google. Do you know what Google means? It was a math equation that had no end. Yeah, I said, what do what Google means? So Google, Google, okay. We give thanks. How many prayers begin that way? To God to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Well, you know, in Thessalonians chapter five, it says, pray without ceasing. How can that be? Pray. How do you pray without ceasing? How do you pray always for someone? All day long, Father, I thank you. Thank you for blessing the people as they come in. Thank you, Father, anyone sick, heal them, Father. Father, that people would know you Last night, I, I couldn't sleep. I was just praying for people. Oh, Father God, that people would have an encounter with you in these days that we live. Father, I thank you that people aren't fearful. And, and, and then I would pray in the spirit. Pray, the word says. Pray, my friends. And then watch miracles happen. We give thanks, verse 3. To the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you since we heard of your faith. As Darren was saying, your faith is not just for you. You know, the, the grain of mustard seed, it, it compares faith to that grain. And, and a few weeks ago, someone was preaching on it and we put a big tree up there. The beauty of faith that starts out small and it grows, people can find shade under that tree. The birds can have nests in that tree. So even in a parable, the faith was not just for you, it produced for someone else to find a respite, someone else to have some peace. How beautiful when you're free, the overflow of freedom touches others, amen? Hallelujah. Ooh, five minutes. Okay, I better speak fast now. Verse four. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and your love for all the saints, the saints again, and they heard about faith and they heard about love. You want people to hear about your faith and your love. The two go together. The word of God says faith works by love. So they don't want to just hear about your faith and your stinginess. People don't want to hear that you just have all this great faith, but you never do great works. Great faith has great joy, even if you're crying. Great faith is believing for others and blessing others. How can you express faith without action? Hallelujah, starting with confessing Christ, amen? 
Okay, Bible study people, are you awake? Got to sing that awake song again. That was good. Wake up, you sleeper. <laughs> you know, that's kind of funny because there's a Jonah in the book of Jonah when he was escaping and running away from God. You know, we all know about Jonah and the whale, right? So Jonah thought he could run away from God's will and to go to Nineveh and preach and preach repentance to the people. Well, Jonah hated the people. He just said, I'm not going. And so he hid in a boat that was going 600 miles to Spain instead of, he was 600 miles in the wrong direction. So Jonah falls asleep in the hull. Is at the bottom of the boat, the hull of the boat. And a big storm comes. And the, the mariners are, and all the workers on the ship are tossing out all of the cargo and everyone's crying out, it says, to their God. Now this song that we sang this morning is not decreeing this upon you. It just was a statement that reminded me of Jonah. <laughs> And the mariners go down into the hull and said, wake up, you sleeper. The world woke up the man of God. We do not want the world or the waves to wake up the man of God. We got the Holy Ghost. We are always awake. We are always aware. And when they had to wake him up, I'm th so happy all of you are awake, aware, and ready to go in the right direction. Amen? All right, that was just a little side sermon. All right, here we go. Verse 5, because of the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, of which you heard before in the word of truth. Oh, Jesus. Let that soak into you what this word is called, the word of truth of the gospel, which has come to you as it has also in all the world and is bringing forth fruit as it is also among you since the day you heard and knew the grace of God in truth. Truth, truth, bringing forth fruit called saints, called to pray. As you have learned from Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, he has declared to us your love in the spirit. And for this reason, we also, since the day we heard about your faith, about your love, about your fruit, do not cease to pray. Here we go again. We're only in verse 9, and we know to pray. We know we're saints. We know faith has fruit. And we don't stop to pray for you and to ask. If you wonder what prayer is, pray for someone and ask. It tells you right here what to ask or what Apostle Paul is asking for the saints in Colossae. That you may be filled with the knowledge of his will. Mm, I pray that all the time. That every pastor, every leader would be filled, every saint, every child would be filled with the knowledge of his will. In all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you may have a walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him. Oh, here we go again, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy. Verse 12, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be a partaker, say, I'm a partaker. Yes, you are, a partaker in an inheritance. How many of you would like to have an inheritance? I mean, like a, a rich relative leave you something 
and not an IOU. I mean, leave you real money. God has left an inheritance. We have and are living in our inheritance, and yet there is more to come. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us. Whew, how can that be? Because of atonement, he has qualified us. We do not get arrogant with that word. We are qualified because of him, because of the cross, because of the blood. And again, he says, an inheritance of the saints in the light. He has, verse 13, and I will end with this. He has delivered us from the power of darkness that addiction, that perversion, that anger, that sin. And first, us being alienated from God, now he has because of the cross and us believing in him. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed or translated or transferred us into the kingdom of the son of his love in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins oh i have to read verse 15 keep playing back there all is well okay verse 15 he is the image of the invisible god the firstborn over all creation for by him all things were created this is Jesus, that are in heaven and earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things and in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead that in all things he may have preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell. And by him to reconcile all things to himself. By him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. And we once were alienated and enemies in your minds by wicked works. Yet now he has reconciled. Hello, saints, reconciled ones who believe in him. Oh, praise be unto God. Stand up. We're going to sing this incredible song. That one. Oh. The word has been spoken in miracles. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. I just told them to sing this song so they're getting ready. Oh, we bless you, Lord. Right now, as they are preparing, if you have never received Jesus Christ as Lord, and you can't remember a time you ever prayed and said, I see you. I confess you as Lord. I acknowledge you as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. If you have never prayed that prayer, could you raise your hand? He is the author of salvation. Let's pray together and say this, Father, I acknowledge your son, Jesus, who died for me, took my sin, 
and gave me righteousness. I acknowledge the Lordship of Christ. Help me to see your death, burial, and resurrection. And I confess you are Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.